Every civilization rests on its heroes because civilization attracts barbarism, attracts invasion, attracts aggressors. Civilization survives only if there are heroes ready to come forward to defend it. That is the lesson of history. But sometimes it's even more basic than that. It's not just civilizations, it's communities. For community, any community to survive, there have to be those who are willing to do what the average person is unwilling to. There have to be those who are willing to take a risk, to suffer pain, even death, in defense of the community. Sri Lanka was fortunate throughout its long history to have produced heroes. And General Jerry De Silva must be thanked as a hero himself for having penned this collection of stories, true stories of real heroes. We live in a very strange situation today, ladies and gentlemen, a situation in which we do not remember our heroes, we do not honor our heroes, we do not express gratitude to our heroes. What kind of man or woman is ungrateful to those who have saved him or her? What kind of society? What kind of people are unwilling to remember their heroes? Look around you, from the United States of America to Cuba, from China to Vietnam. Everywhere you will find that heroes are remembered. This is not just an old tradition, though it is as old as literature. From Homer onwards, it's a very contemporary thing. Those of you who saw the movie American Sniper about Chris Kyle, who was a hero though he fought in an unjust war, uh, know how he's remembered, how he's memorialized. Then there's of course the famous example of Che Guevara, who was defeated in battle, but immortalized as a hero by Fidel and inspired generations. Every society remembers its heroes and passes down the memory of the heroes to the next generations. In a midnight rally announcing to the Cuban people the death of Che Guevara, Fidel Castro said, if we want, if we are asked what do we want future generations to be like, our answer is let them be like Che. That is the way in which he passed down the ideals of heroism to the next generation and the next. But we have stopped that. We are so ungrateful to our heroes that we do not even want to commemorate the great victory that they contributed to with their heroism and their lives. We don't talk about victory anymore. That is to dishonor heroes, to refuse to commemorate victory in a great war, a just war, a long war. That is the very depth of ingratitude. If we do not honor our heroes, what are the values that we pass down to the next generation? We should be making movies, we should have TV series, we should be writing books. And I'm glad that General Kamal Gunaratna is here. He's written a wonderful book, as has General Jerry De Silva. We should be producing graphic novels. You would remember that uh, the famous battle at Thermopylae, immortalized by Herodotus, is still being made into movies. The famous movie 300 is based on a graphic novella of the battle waged by Leonidas and the Spartans, the 300 Spartans, blocking the pass at Thermopylae to prevent the Persian invasion by one and a half million soldiers. But we we have forgotten 
our heroes. What does that make us? We have gone beyond that. We have gone beyond mere forgetting and refusing to commemorate the victory that the heroes contributed to. We have gone beyond that. We have gone one step backward. What have we done now? Some of us, not all of us. What have we done? We have bought in to a narrative in which the heroes and a heroic war is depicted upside down. When you say that war crimes were committed, when you accept the propaganda of the front organizations of our enemy, when you co-sponsor resolutions that accept and are based on that narrative, which says, which calls into question the just nature of the war that the heroes gave their lives in. Then what are we doing? When every other civilization, every other society tries to write a narrative as truthfully as possible, which gives heroism its true place, we are looking at ourselves, at the war that we fought and won, at our heroes, and are saying that this was wrong, that we committed crimes, that we were not defending ourselves, and that we don't trust our institutions. We must get foreign judges or foreign personnel, foreign observers, set up special courts, bring special laws, and try the surviving heroes, and thereby besmirching the memory of the heroes who have become martyrs, the ones who are immortalized in General Jerry De Silva's book, and who should be immortalized in every school syllabus. I was ambassador to France, and in France, when you go to any Mary municipality, you have inscribed in, in stone the names of all those from that area, that municipality, who fought and died for France in the wars. Whether it's the revolutions or other wars, some of them were not just wars, some of them were colonial wars, but everyone is remembered in the municipality. All the names are there. That is the way that other countries remember their heroes. But I would like to say that I am not pessimistic. The reason I am not pessimistic is that it is possible to obliterate history and to bury the heroism of the heroes only in a society in which there are no more heroes. In a society in which the generation of heroes has died out. But when I look around me today, I see heroes in this audience. I see a heroic former president, a heroic former secretary of defense who was himself a decorated officer. I see those who commanded men, who performed enormous feats of valor. I see brilliant officers around me. There are still enough heroes in this society to prevent this betrayal that some people are striving to engage in by co-sponsoring the infamous Geneva Resolution and setting up special courts to try our war veterans. I see a generation of heroes. I see a society, I see a country that did not lose a war, but won a war. A state that prevailed, not a state that failed. So we have still among us the generation of heroes, those who survived, those who led. And in conclusion, I ask you, I request you, I implore you, there is one more battle that you have to fight, and that is the battle of ideas. The battle to save the honor of the men 
who served and died under you, the men whose feats are recorded by General Jerry De Silva, whose widows are here with us. We owe it to them, all of us. We owe it to the future generations. We owe it to the young people who are to come after us. To wipe away these black marks, the tar that some are attempting to blacken the history of our just war of self-defense with. We owe it to our heroes. So, on that note, calling on those of you who are heroes, who are alive among us, who fought this war and who won to fight once more in the battle of ideas to preserve and protect what you fought for and won for all of us. Thank you.